our assessment is that the situation at Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant remains still very serious, though there are early signs of recovery in some functions such as electrical power and instrumentation. On 17th of April, the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry announced that TEPCO had issued a roadmap towards restoration from the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station. The roadmap outlines 63 measures to be taken in two steps over a period of six to nine months. Then as concerns the status of the site today, <coughs> TEPCO has provided a plan to NISA for the transfer of highly contaminated water from the basement floor of the turbine building of Unit 2 to the main building of the radioactive waste treatment facilities in order to reduce the risk of this stagnant water being discharged to the environment. On 17th and 18th of April, an unmanned robot was used to conduct inspections of the reactor buildings in Units 1, 2, and 3. And as of 18th of April, white smoke was still observed coming from Units 2, 3, and 4. As for cooling, in Unit 1, fresh water is being continuously injected into the reactor pressure vessel through the feed water line at an indicated flow rate of 6 cubic meters per hour using a temporary electric pump with off-site power. In Units 2 and 3, fresh water is being continuously injected through the fire extinguisher lines at a rate of 7 cubic meters per hour using temporary electric pumps with off-site power. Reactor pressure vessel temperatures remain above cold shutdown conditions in all units. In Unit 1, the temperature at the feed water nozzle of the reactor pressure vessel is 170 degrees, and at the bottom it is 115 degrees. In Unit 4, the temperature at the feed water nozzle of the reactor pressure vessel is 142 degrees. And in Unit 3, the temperature at the feed water nozzle is 100 degrees Celsius. At the bottom, it is 114 degrees Celsius. In Unit 1, nitrogen gas is being injected into the containment vessel to reduce the possibility of hydrogen combustion within the containment vessel. And the pressure in this containment vessel has stabilized. The pressure in the reactor pressure vessel is increasing. In units two and three, reactor pressure vessel and dry well pressures remain at atmospheric pressures. On the 18th of April, the concrete pump track sprayed water into Unit 3 spent fuel pool. And on 17th of April, approximately 140 tons of fresh water was pumped into the Unit 4 spent fuel pool. And there has been no change in the status in Units 5 and 6 or in the common spent fuel storage facility. And to prevent dispersion of radioactivity, on 17th and 18th of April, anti-scattering agent was spread over an additional 3,100 square meters area near the centralized waste treatment facility. As concerns radio radioactive monitoring, on the 18th of April, deposition of iodine-131 was detected in six prefectures ranging from 2.3 to 65 becquerels per square meter. And deposition of cesium-137 was detected in two prefectures. The values reported were 4.7 and 14.8 becquerels per square meter. Gamma dose rates are measured daily in all 47 prefectures. The values tend to decrease over time. For Fukushima, on the 18th of April, a dose rate of 1.9 microsievert per hour was reported. In the Ibaraki prefecture, 
a gamma dose rate of 0.13 microsievert per hour was reported. In all other prefectures, reported gamma dose rates were below 0.1 microsievert per hour. Dose rates are also reported specifically for the eastern part of the Fukushima prefecture for distances beyond 30 kilometers from Fukushima Daiichi. On 17th of April, the values in this area range from 0.1 to 23 microsievert per hour. And as already mentioned, MEXT has, has set up an additional monitoring program in cooperation with local universities. For the, the 18th of April, Measurements of the gamma dose rates were reported for 53 cities in 40 prefectures. In Fukushima City, a value of 0.38 microsievert per hour was observed. In nine cities, gamma dose rates ranged from 0.13 to 0.17 microsievert per hour. And for the other cities, a gamma dose rates of less than 0.1 microsievert per hour were reported. In drinking water, iodine-131 or cesium-137 is detectable at very low levels only in a few prefectures. And as of 17th of April, one restriction only for infants related to iodine-131 is in place on a small scale water supply in a village of the Fukushima prefecture. On the 18th of April, the IAEA team made measurements at 12 different locations in the Fukushima area at distances ranging from 13 to 43 kilometers south and southwest from the nuclear power plant. At these locations, the dose rates range from 0.25 to 6.8 microsievert per hour, and at the same locations, results of beta-gamma contamination measurements range from 0.01 to 0.15 megabecquerels per square meter. Analytical results related to food contamination were reported by the Japanese Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare on the 18th of April and covered a total of 23 samples taken on the 8th, 15th, 17th, and 18th of April. Analytical results for all of the samples of various vegetables, shiitake mushrooms, leafy vegetables, fruit, fish, and unprocessed raw milk in eight prefectures indicated that iodine-131, cesium-134 and or cesium-137 were either not detected or below the regulation values set by the Japanese authorities. Now going to the marine monitoring program, as concerns TEPCO's program, it is conducting, TEPCO is conducting a program for seawater surface sampling at a number of near-shore and offshore monitoring locations following a, following a directive from NISA. On 16th April, TEPCO announced they will increase the number of sea sampling points from 10 to 16. And a further four points will be added at three kilometers from the coast, and two points will be added at eight kilometers from the coast. The new sampling size will be shown in a further presentation. On some days, two samples were collected at the same sampling point a few hours apart and analyzed separately. Until the 3rd of April, oh, no, sorry. Um, and as concerns the next offshore monitoring program, uh, Japanese Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology initiated the offshore monitoring program on 23rd of March and subsequently four points were added and there also uh, more detail will be given during the presentation. And finally, as concerns the IAEA activities, uh, the mission of BWR experts to Japan 
provided the IAEA with a unique opportunity to communicate directly with the various stakeholders working to address challenges at both the Daiichi and Daini reactor sites. All organizations fully cooperated with the IAEA team and provided the team with a better understanding of event sequences, current challenges, and future plans and priorities. The IAEA team of BWR experts toured the Fukushima Daiichi site and the emergency center, and the team was also able to tour the Fukushima Daini site. At all facilities, the IAEA team noted a strong, positive attitude broadly displayed by the management, support, and task implementation teams, even though the situation is not yet stabilized. And activities appeared to be well organized, efforts were thoroughly planned, and responsibilities well communicated. 